Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Andy Gellenberg. And you'll see in Photopia I have already opened up a photograph of myself. And the first thing I'm going to do is go Image Vectorize Bitmap. And it's going to open up this screen. And I'm going to change the number of layers to 7. And I'm going to make sure I click Segmentize. And then I'll click OK and I end up with my photograph looking a little like this where all the colors have been separated. First thing I'm going to do is just right click on that top layer and flatten the image down um, and then I'm going to get rid of the background so I'm going to use the magic wand tool click on the background press delete and click on that bit and press delete. Okay and this is the image that I'm looking to respond to of Andy Gillenberg's work and using the eyedropper tool I'm just going to select that yellow and go back to my piece because I want to use the same colors in my work. I'm going to grab the magic wand tool again but this time I'm going to turn the contiguous check box off and make sure I've got a tolerance of 10. Okay then I'm going to choose the color that I want to be yellow and with the paint bucket I'm going to turn contiguous off as well and click that and everywhere that was that color in the image has now turned that yellow okay so I'm going to do the same again I drop the pink this time and using the magic wand with contiguous off I'm going to choose the next color and then using the paint bucket with contiguous off, I'm going to paint all of that color in, in pink. Okay, right, I'm also going to use pink on one of the other colors. So I'm just going to grab the magic wand tool and select that color and then back to the paint bucket and paint bucket that in as well. Okay, then I'm gonna choose the next color And I dropper it and then go back to my piece magic wand the next area or next color that I want to be the new color paint bucket and fill all that in and I just continue to do the same thing darker and darker so I dropper the next color and take the next darkest bits and magic wand them and then paint bucket them all the contiguous off so that they all get covered at the same time and then lastly black for my darkest areas magic wand paint bucket and fill okay right now i've sorted myself in different colors time to do the background so i'm going to select a new layer and drag that underneath my image and I'm going to eyedropper the yellow color again and grab the paintbrush make sure I've got quite a big brush and I'm going to paint in some areas of my background in the yellow and then I'm going to grab the eyedropper again and select the dark green this time and then again with the paintbrush, painting in some areas with that dark green. That's it. And next up, I'm going to choose the pink with the eyedropper. And again with the paintbrush, paint in some more areas of the background. Okay. And then he's got some nice light green on his work so I'm going to grab that with the eyedropper and I'm going to paint that in with the paintbrush just up here and then I'm going to grab the black and I'm going to put some in at the top there and some down by the side okay and that's the background colors sorted now to start adding some details 
first thing I'm going to do is load up this pattern of tiger print that I found on Google. And I'm going to use the magic wand to select the color and press delete so that I'm left with just the black areas. And then I'm going to use the rectangle select tool to select the image, then press control C to copy it and then go back to my project and press control V to paste it in. And I'm just using the arrow tool to resize it and plop it over the top of this yellow section, which is where I want it to be. Then I'm going to go back to the background layer and magic wand just that yellow bit. Then go to select and inverse. So it selected everything other than the yellow and then go back to my tiger print, press delete and it's deletes everything that is not in the yellow. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my pattern and I'm going to control C that again and control V. So I get it into my project and I'm going to use it again, bit of a swivel with the arrow tool and a resize. And it's going over this yellow section and differently this time, I'm going to let it overlap onto that green section just to make things a bit more interesting. Right. I'm going to press control V again to paste the tiger print in a third time. And it's going to go up in this corner here this time. Again, I'm kind of overlapping the green and the pink as with before, just to kind of make things look a bit more interesting, a bit more dynamic. And obviously it's going below my portrait. So I drag that layer down and I've just noticed that I've left a bit out of my portrait that should be that nice light green color. So I'm just going to get the magic wand tool and highlight that color and actually put a bit of highlight on my lip as well. And then I'm going to go to the paint bucket and fill those areas in. Okay, right. Sorry, I missed that. Now back to it. Next thing we're going to do is do some designs for the background. So I'm grabbing the paintbrush tool and going for a fairly small brush. And I'm going to stick with that green color and I'm going to draw myself a donut. So brown donut, icing, hole in the middle, and then thicken up some of the lines and then put some sprinkles in. Okay, that's good. Right, once I've done that, use the arrow tool just to move that into position. And I'm going to right click on that layer and duplicate it. And I'll shove another donut down here, rotate it a bit, squish it a bit, make it look a bit different from the first one. Then I'm going to go image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and bring down the brightness to make this one a bit darker. Okay, then right click duplicate layer. And I'm going to grab it and bring it to the other side, make it a bit smaller, rotate it again make it look a bit more different. And this one, I'm going to have that yellow color. So I'm going to eye drop that yellow, then get the paint bucket and change the color. Okay. Next up, I'm going to add some white. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to grab the paintbrush and I'm going to change the color to white. Click okay. And I'm going to make sure I've got quite a medium thickness to the brush and I'm going to draw some lines kind of around the edge of my portrait just to give it a bit of a highlight not all over it just some parts and down the shoulder a bit I think yeah you don't have to be too fussy you want to be quite dynamic I'm going to put this layer below my portrait though so that it's kind of poking out from behind now some for the other side. 
down the edge by my eye. Okay, looking good. All right, a little bit there maybe, floating. Right, now I'm gonna grab another layer and put that above my portrait because I will now want to use some white just to add some highlights onto areas of my body. So, again, you can be quite dynamic with this. And maybe some up at the top there and some triangles like Andy Kellenberg has just to make the piece feel more interesting and dynamic. Okay. And a little bit down there by the side of me. Okay. Right. That'll do, just a bit over there. And I'm just going to change up the colour. Get the eyedropper and the yellow. Okay. And change the thickness of the brush, make it much smaller. Because I want to add some scribbles into my portrait. Again, just to give it a bit of texture, make it look a little bit more visually interesting. I know when I'm using the brush this small, it's a bit difficult to see what I'm doing. And I'm kind of adding just little details here and there using the yellow. Bits to, you know, give my beard some texture, add a little bit more interest to the body. Okay, right, now I'm going to change up the colour and I'm going to go for black this time. Click OK. Go up to the brush, make it a bit thicker again. In fact, I'm going to use this kind of line brush and it's going to give me a slightly different brush stroke. It's going to look a little bit more like a marker pen. And I'm just going to put some of these lines up here in the top right hand corner and go a bit thicker as well. Change up the thickness, put some more in. Okay. Looking good. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to the normal brush make it a bit thicker like it was and put some interesting sketchy bits down on my clothing. Okay. Right, next up, I'm gonna grab that yellow again and I'm just gonna put some streaks down my face here. Again, just a little bit more interesting bit more texture. Right, last thing I'm going to do is get the eyedropper and get that greeny blue colour again. And I'm going to grab that line brush again and maybe a little bit too thick, go a bit thinner. That's good. I'm going to start putting in some texture down here using that nice colour. Okay, so some thin ones first. And then once I'm happy that I've got enough of those on, I'll go slightly thicker and build onto those as well. Okay, looking good. Right, I think that piece is done and dusted. I hope you find this tutorial helpful.